So today I have two puzzles and I thought I would take you guys through my thought process while explaining why I'm going to make the moves that I do. So what I do here is I have a couple steps. Number one is, are there any forcing moves? Number two is, are there any checks? Number three, are there any captures? Number four, look at all the tactical weaknesses. And then finally, number five, look for the quiet moves. So for the first one, forcing moves, that's obvious. If there's a forcing move, the line is going to be a lot easier to calculate through just because you only have to calculate one line. You know exactly what move your opponent is going to play. Whereas if, you if your opponent can play a couple different moves, then it becomes a bit harder because you have to calculate each and every single line. Now for number two, checks, that's obvious enough. If there is a check, maybe there's a checkmate. You just want to kind of look for those. And then number three are captures. So if you can win a piece, then that could also be the key to a puzzle. And number four, tactical weaknesses. So what a tactical weakness is, is it's a piece that is either being attacked the same amount of times that it's being defended, or it's a piece that's being attacked more than the amount of times it's defended. So for example, this is a tactical weakness because there is one attacker and there are no defenders. But also, this is a tactical weakness because there are no defenders and there are no, de no attackers. This is also a tactical weakness. So right now there are three tactical weaknesses in the position, but I'm not even gonna pay attention to those first. First, I'm looking at the forcing moves. So right now I already see a forcing move, knight to h3. There's only one line that I need to calculate, which is why I'm going to do that first. So king can go to h1, that's the only move for the white king. And now just like that, there are two moves that I no longer need to calculate. And then I go down the pyramid again with our new puzzle. This is our new puzzle. And I say, well, are there any forcing moves? And the answer is no. If we start out with this, number one, the king is in the corner. So maybe there's going to be a smothered mate. Number two, our pieces are very active. We have lines towards the king. So this could be leading to a checkmate, but I'm not sure yet. When I look at checks, I see this, but I don't think it is this because I don't think this is a puzzle about winning material. I think it's a puzzle about checkmate. There's this one more check. And if rook takes, why is that bad? Well, if you said knight to f2, you'd be correct, and that would be a smothered mate. So I'm going to play that out just to show you guys. And that is a smothered mate. But that is obviously not what white would do. White would obviously just take with the knight. And then when you try the smothered mate again, obviously it doesn't work and you've let your advantage slip, white is now up seven points and you're gonna lose this game. Let's go back. That's not what we're doing. So the next thing in the pyramid is captures. So right now I only see one capture. Actually, I see two captures. So there are two captures that we have to work with. I'm gonna look at this one first just because it looks like maybe we're kind of destroying the king's shelter. So there becomes a whole world of possibilities but if I take this bishop, for one, I don't need to worry about my knight hanging. But let's say if the pawn takes, what would we do? Well, I'm not really seeing any follow-up for what this would do. Maybe I'm seeing this check, but again, I don't really think it's leading anywhere. But maybe I'm going to be winning a piece. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't think this is the right move. So I'm not seeing a follow-up there, but maybe there's a follow-up with the rook taking. So if the rook takes then my first instinct is to look for the smothered mate, which does work, I think, right? Bishop takes, and then rook takes, and then here, here. Oh, whoops, wait a second. So I thought it was a smothered mate, but it turns out that this rook actually has to come back and collect the knight, so that was bad on my part. I moved a little bit too fast. But if the rook does take, I think I do see a potential checkmate. Um, I'm looking at this capture first. I'm looking at this and then maybe if knight takes, oh, then I have my, okay, then I have my checkmate, okay. So it works in one line, but now let's go back because if it doesn't work in all lines, then it's not the proper move. So first of all, what I'm seeing, maybe the most intuitive is maybe rook takes rook, but this actually loses to again, a smothered mate. So if we look at that, this is a smothered mate. The king is in check and it's got nowhere to go because it's smothered by its own pieces. But maybe the rook doesn't take because again, while captures are threatening, they're not always forcing moves. Maybe the knight takes, but then again, we have the same smothered mate tactic. 
So, so far in two possible lines, we're doing good. But what if white totally just ignores the threat? Let's say, I don't know, white plays bishop here, just totally ignores it. Well, what are we going to do? Well, if I go again with my approach, I'm looking at number one, forcing moves, number two, checks, number three, captures, and then tactical weaknesses and quiet moves. So here is, this is not a forcing move, but it is a check. This is a capture and a check. So this actually is going to come higher on the pyramid just because this is a capture and a check at the same time. But then if I calculate it through, I don't think I'm seeing a checkmate. I think I'm only just trading the rooks because I don't see any follow-up here. I don't think this is the answer. While yes, we are trading and that's good, obviously, because we're up material. The next thing I wanna look at is what if white just takes my knight? So if white just takes my knight, this is actually a very simple checkmate. So there's nothing to worry about there. Let's go back again. So, so far it seems like this is going to be the right move because all of white's moves, again, we can also look at the exact same pyramid for white. All of white's captures on the rook lead to a smothered mate. The capture on this leads to another checkmate like this. And so it seems like this rook cannot be captured, in which case we've just won a bishop. So if this rook can't be taken, then what the heck is white going to do? Well, it becomes very tricky because there are just so many possible moves. Like we can just count, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's just with like three pieces. So it's going to be impossible to calculate through every single move, but I don't think I need to because if this rook can't be taken, what else are you going to do? The only really move that would kind of sort of be logical would be maybe this move to maybe attack the bishop. I'm not exactly sure. So we know that rook takes f1 doesn't work because that ends up just being a big trade. But the next thing I want to look at is a capture on perhaps a1. Maybe this could make a difference. So if I look at the capture on a1, um, let's say the rook takes back. Well, then maybe I would go, hmm, I think again, it becomes a smothered mate, right? If I take here and the rook takes, then once again, this is a smothered mate. So awesome, one of those lines works. Now I need to calculate the rest of the lines. And now I see why this rook trade wasn't so good. It was because we don't have that smothered mate, but it almost seems like this rook is indestructible because now when I take this rook, the rook can't even take back because of that smothered mate. So if it's not a puzzle about checkmating, it's certainly a puzzle about winning a lot of material. And by a lot, I mean I'm winning a rook and a bishop and I was already up five points. So if I take here, now I'm up 13 points. Now, I don't know again what white would do. If white does nothing, then that's an easy checkmate. So now it becomes a question of, well, how do you stop that checkmate? And maybe, I don't know, you would play bishop to b1, in which case still I would just take it. And it seems like you're just delaying the inevitable until it becomes a checkmate. I don't even know what white would do. I guess just take the rook. And then finally, it becomes a smothered mate. So that's the first puzzle. And what's a key takeaway of that isn't even the puzzle itself. It's just the techniques that I used to come up with the solution that I did. And that is number one, look for forcing moves. Number two, look for checks. Number three, look for captures. Number four, look for tactical weaknesses. And number five, look for quiet moves.